My own sister ruined my life by helping my ex-wife make me pay child support for a child that wasn't even mine. I will start by admitting honestly that I hate my sister though it wasn't always like this. Nina is my older sister, and I admired her a lot when we were growing up. But over time, she's shown me what a terrible sister she can be. You see, I was married to my ex-wife, Susie, for two years before I discovered she had been cheating on me. The revelation came as a complete shock. I still remember the moment vividly I was reading through her messages and stumbled upon a conversation where she had been sexting with her male best friend of eight years. Susie had always assured me that he was just a friend, someone who had been in her life forever. Despite feeling pangs of jealousy at times, I trusted her deeply. We had built our relationship on that trust, so when I accidentally saw those lewd text messages between them, I felt utterly blindsided. It was as if the foundation of everything I believed about our marriage had crumbled in an instant. I confronted her, and she immediately broke down, apologizing profusely. She insisted it was just a one-time mistake and that her friend meant nothing to her in that way. She promised to block him and assured me it would never happen again. Despite my anger and hurt, I wanted to believe her. We started going for marriage counseling because I was deeply wounded by her betrayal, and I needed to understand why it happened and if our marriage could be salvaged. In counseling, Susie seemed genuinely remorseful. She took responsibility for her actions and worked hard to regain my trust. For a while, it felt like we were making real progress. She was attentive, transparent, and willing to put in the effort to mend our relationship. I decided to stay and give our marriage another chance because I still loved her, and I wanted to believe that people could change and relationships could heal. However, as you might have already guessed, it was a huge mistake. After a while, I found out my ex-wife was trying to secretly meet up with her male best friend one evening. She had told me earlier that she was going to be out with a co-worker, but something in her behavior seemed odd, and I had a nagging feeling she was lying. Trusting my gut, I decided to call the co-worker after Susie left just to check with them. To my dismay, they told me that they had no such plans with Susie. I felt a wave of devastation and confusion wash over me. It was becoming painfully clear that Susie was probably meeting up with this guy otherwise she had no reason totally to me. My mind raced with thoughts of betrayal as I tried calling her multiple times, but she ignored every call. I felt a growing sense of dread and helplessness as the hours ticked by. That night, she finally came home very late, completely drunk. I had been waiting for her all evening, sitting on the couch in our living room, my mind a whirlwind of emotions. When she walked through the door, she didn't even acknowledge me as she looked completely drunk. She just stumbled past me on her way to the bedroom, acting as if I didn't exist. I sat there, feeling invisible and utterly heartbroken, realizing that the woman I once trusted and loved had become a stranger to me. Later, when I was about to go to sleep, I heard her phone buzz on the bedside table with a message notification. Susie had fallen asleep fully dressed in her clothes from the evening, clearly too drunk to even change. I gently covered her with a blanket and, driven by a mix of dread and curiosity, leaned over to check the message she had received. As soon as I saw the number, I recognized it instantly it belonged to him, her male friend. My heart sank as I read the text, that was so much fun. We should do this more often the message ended with a tongue and a sweat drop emoji which only made things worse. I felt a wave of nausea hit me. There was no way a guy would send a message like that with those emojis if it didn't mean something significant had happened between them. My mind raced with all sorts of terrible thoughts about what they might have done. I felt sick to my stomach, realizing that my worst fears were likely true. I tried to calm myself, but it was impossible. The betrayal felt like a physical pain in my chest, and I couldn't shake the image of them together. I couldn't sleep at all that night. I tossed and turned in bed, my mind consumed by anxiety and heartbreak. I kept replaying everything in my head, wondering how it had come to this and what I was supposed to do next. The night felt endless, and by the time morning came, I knew that nothing would ever be the same. When I confronted Susie about that night and how she had lied, she did everything she could to avoid taking responsibility. At first, she tried to manipulate and gaslight me, claiming that my lack of trust was the real issue and that calling her co-worker was an invasion of her privacy. She accused me of being paranoid and unreasonable. Her attempts to gaslight me were frustrating and hurtful, but I refused to back down. I brought up the message he had sent, demanding an explanation. She brushed it off, insisting that's just how friends talk to each other, and called me a weirdo for reading too much into it. Her dismissive attitude only fueled my determination to get to the truth. I decided to play my last card. I told her I would confront him directly if she didn't come clean to me. This threat seemed to strike a nerve. She became visibly anxious and tried to dissuade me from contacting him, clearly worried about the consequences. Finally, after much resistance and reluctance, Susie broke down and confessed. She admitted that she had been wanting to see him for a long time and that they had indeed made out after getting drunk. Her confession was like a punch to the gut, confirming my worst fears and shattering any remaining trust I had in her. She continued to justify her actions, suggesting that our marriage had become dull and that she was seeking excitement elsewhere. I vehemently disagreed, pointing out that her cheating and deceit were the very reasons our marriage had soured. I reminded her that it was impossible to return to normalcy after discovering she was sexting with another man. 
Despite her attempts to rationalize her behavior, I stood my ground firmly. I made it clear that the blame lay squarely on her shoulders for wreaking our vows and destroying the trust we had built. I expressed my deep disappointment and told her that I had reached my breaking point I couldn't simply overlook her actions and pretend everything was okay. Susie, realizing the gravity of the situation, began pleading for forgiveness. She acknowledged her issues but begged me not to abandon her, emphasizing that she was willing to work on herself and our relationship. Despite her promises, I realized that the trust between us had forever been shattered. The damage was too deep now, and eventually, I realized that staying was only going to prolong the inevitable. Her betrayal had created a rift that we couldn't bridge, and our marriage had been irreparably damaged. After realizing this, I had to make the hardest decision in my life by asking her to move out of my house. Fortunately, we had a prenuptial agreement in place so I was relieved that it was going to be protecting me from any potential financial repercussions during our divorce. Despite her insistence and attempts to involve her friends to persuade me to forgive her, I stood firm in my decision and ultimately kicked her out to the streets. I know this might sound harsh to read but I was in too much pain since I always thought that we would grow old together. However, her betrayal left me shattered, and I knew I would never be the same again. I confided in my parents and my older sister, Nina, about what had transpired between me and Susie. They were shocked and dismayed by the news, as no one had anticipated Susie's actions, and assured me of their support to divorce her, which provided me with some comfort. However, Nina seemed unusually quiet throughout all this which struck me as odd. When I asked her for her thoughts, considering her close relationship with Susie during our marriage, she responded in an unexpected way. Instead of acknowledging my feelings of betrayal caused by Susie's actions, Nina questioned whether I was certain about divorcing Susie, pointing out that unlike me, Susie didn't have any family support. I was taken aback by Nina's response. It seemed like she was more concerned about Susie's well-being than she was about the emotional turmoil I was going through. I responded firmly to Nina, stating that I didn't care about Susie's support system because she had chosen to betray me repeatedly through her infidelity. I emphasized that Susie's well-being was no longer my concern, and I questioned why she seemed more concerned about my ex-wife than about me, her own brother. Nina defended herself, explaining that she was simply worried about me and didn't want me to make any hasty decisions about my marriage without thinking about it. She expressed how she had always believed Susie and I were meant for each other and that she was still in shock about our divorce hence she wanted to know if I would have any regrets going down the line. While I found her response to be strange at the time, I didn't dwell on it too much afterward. The entire situation was already emotionally draining, so I tried to be more focused on getting through my divorce first. In the beginning, everything seemed to be going well for me during the divorce proceedings, and my lawyer was confident that we would win the case, but then everything changed. Susie dropped a bombshell she was pregnant. I was completely blindsided by this revelation it was something I hadn't seen coming at all. Clearly life had different plans for me and wanted to hurt me more. After this news, Susie and her lawyer urged me to halt the divorce proceedings. They argued that we should try to work things out for the sake of our child. Susie insisted that she wanted to provide our child with a traditional family upbringing. I was taken aback and immediately pushed back that I didn't care about her wishes anymore and that there was no way this child could be mine. Susie's response was to argue back that she had never been intimate with anyone else other than me. She emphasized that just because she had made out with her male best friend that night didn't mean she could get pregnant from him. She continued to urge me to consider what was best for our child and to fight for our marriage for the baby's sake. However, I refused to be swayed. I knew this was a desperate attempt to derail the divorce proceedings and guilt trip me into staying with her so she could continue to live a lavish life with my money. It was clear to me that Susie was grasping at straws, and I remained resolute in my decision to end the marriage. I stood firm, insisting that the divorce would proceed as planned. I stated that after Susie gave birth, I would arrange for a paternity test to determine if the child was mine or not. However, Susie's lawyer countered our argument, claiming that since Susie was still legally married to me and had stated that she hadn't been intimate with anyone else, it automatically made me the father of the child. They asserted that they would seek child support for me due to this. My lawyer vehemently disagreed, pointing out that without a paternity test, such claims were baseless. Unfortunately, we are all too aware of the shortcomings in our legal system, especially when it comes to protecting men in situations like these. In the following weeks, Susie's lawyer proceeded to sue me for child support, presenting evidence to support their claim that Susie had not been intimate with anyone else. They portrayed me as a controlling freak who was trying to get away from paying child support and taking any responsibility for my actions. They even brought in witnesses to testify on Susie's behalf. To my shock, among the witnesses was my older sister, Nina. I had no idea that she would even be there. Initially, I assumed she was there just to observe and support me, but to my dismay, she testified against me, stating that she had been friends with Susie for a long time and was certain that Susie couldn't have possibly betrayed me by actually sleeping with someone else since according to my sister, Susie was still in love with me. Nina firmly stated that she believed the child belonged to me. Hearing my own sister support my ex-wife over me was heartbreaking. Nina knew firsthand how much I had loved Susie and how deeply she had hurt me, yet she was there supporting Susie's deceitful actions. 
Later, when we were out of court, I confronted my sister about her unexpected testimony. I expressed my shock and betrayal, feeling completely blindsided by her actions. Nina, however, stood by her decision, insisting that she was doing what she believed was right and that I would eventually appreciate her stance in the future. I raised my voice, expressing my disgust and anger at her for putting me in a situation where I might have to pay child support for a child whose paternity wasn't even confirmed. Nina countered by arguing that I shouldn't be so cruel to an unborn child and that I needed to consider the financial difficulties Susie would face without any alimony and child support from me. Nina told me that I would never understand her perspective because I didn't possess maternal instincts like women did. She urged me to realize that providing for the child's expenses was the least I could do in this situation. I felt exploited and deeply unsettled by my sister's perspective on the matter. I couldn't comprehend how she could prioritize Susie's financial needs over the emotional turmoil I was going through. My parents also expressed their disappointment in my sister, telling Nina that she had no right to go behind my back and testify against me. However, the damage had already been done since my own sister testifying against me proved to the court that Susie might be telling the truth and that I was trying to escape responsibility from our child. Hence, the court ruled in favor of my ex-wife, granting her child support for me until the child turned 18. I was filled with rage and refused to accept the judgment, but despite our efforts, my lawyer and I found ourselves unheard and unable to sway the court's decision. It has been quite a while now since my divorce with Susie, and I've continued to pay child support for her son every month who clearly doesn't resemble me in any way. Despite conducting a paternity test that confirms he isn't mine, the fact remains that because my ex-wife was pregnant while we were still married, the child is legally my responsibility. I'm now compelled to keep paying until he reaches the age of 18. This is why, throughout this ordeal, my resentment towards my sister has deepened even more than towards my ex-wife. I solely blame Nina for making me trapped in this situation. This is why I've maintained complete silence towards my sister and refused to acknowledge her presence at family events. Despite multiple pleas from my parents to forgive her and let the matter go, everyone else in the family respects and understands my stance. Several cousins and relatives share my disdain towards Nina, and as a result, they also keep their distance from her. Nina, on multiple occasions, has complained to our parents about how I've isolated her from the rest of the family. She justifies her actions by claiming that she did what she thought was best for the child. However, her attempts to garner sympathy have continued to fall on deaf ears, as the rest of the family recognizes her foolishness and stands by my decision. Nina got married last year to her longtime boyfriend, Joshua. Despite receiving an invitation to the wedding, I didn't bother to attend. I later learned from my parents that many other family members also didn't attend, which disappointed Nina. After marriage, she and her husband were trying to get pregnant for a while. My parents had expressed their excitement to me about the prospect of finally having a grandchild from our bloodline. Recently, I had to travel to a nearby town for a work conference hosted by my company. After the conference concluded, my co-workers and I decided to unwind and relax at the hotel bar during our free time. Imagine my surprise when I spotted my sister sitting with an older gentleman at the bar. She hadn't noticed me, and I made sure to keep it that way as I was curious about her presence in a bar late at night out of town, considering she was married. I observed as she leaned in closer to the older gentleman and whispered something in his ears that made him laugh. My suspicions grew as they appeared to be flirting and seemed unusually comfortable with each other. Without giving it too much thought, I instinctively reached for my phone and quietly snapped a few pictures. I made sure to capture clear shots of my sister's face and the older gentleman's face, wanting undeniable proof of what I was witnessing. As I observed them together at the bar, my mind raced with disbelief and confusion. How could my sister, who was married, be in such a compromising situation? I watched in disbelief as Nina and the man continued to engage in their intimate conversation, sharing smiles and laughter. After about an hour, the man gestured for Nina to accompany him to his room and she nodded at him and got up to accompany him. My eyes widened as the reality of the situation sank and I was clearly witnessing my sister about to cheat on her husband. I wanted to yell at her to stop, but from my past experience, I had learned that cheaters never learn from their mistakes, instead, they need to be taught a lesson. After I returned home, I made the decision to directly reach out to her husband, Joshua. I felt it was important for him to know the truth rather than be blindsided like I was. I found him on Facebook and sent him a friend request, hoping he would accept it. After a few hours, I checked and saw that he had indeed accepted my request, so I immediately messaged him. In the message, I introduced myself as Nina's brother and explained that we needed to have an important conversation. I asked him not to inform my sister about my text to him and provided him with my phone number so he could call me. I hoped he would listen to what I had to say and waited anxiously for his call. A few minutes later, he called me, curious about why I had reached out. He mentioned that he already knew about me from Nina and my parents but was surprised that I had contacted him after all this time. I apologized to him for not attending their wedding and expressed my regret that we were talking under such circumstances. He then asked me what was wrong, and I truthfully shared what I had seen in the hotel between Nina and the older gentleman. I refrained from immediately using the word cheating as I wasn't entirely sure if Nina and he had an open marriage or not, so I didn't want to make assumptions. 
However, as I detailed the events to Joshua, he began probing with numerous questions about what Nina was wearing and who the other man was, showing clear distress. To support my account, I mentioned that I had even taken photographs of her with the gentleman, as I found it difficult to believe myself. I promptly shared those images with him to provide concrete evidence of what I had witnessed. It was apparent that he was deeply affected by the revelation of Nina's infidelity and was grappling with the gravity of the situation. After a brief pause, he unexpectedly expressed gratitude for my honesty and questioned why I would go out of my way to help him, especially considering we were essentially strangers and I no longer had a relationship with Nina. His question struck a chord and prompted me to share my own experience, explaining how I had been in his position when my ex-wife cheated on me. As I delved into the details, I elaborated on how Nina had added to my pain by testifying against me, leading to my current burden of paying child support for a child who wasn't even mine. Joshua was quiet for a few minutes after hearing my story. He then revealed that Nina had portrayed a completely different version of the truth to him. According to her, Susie and my marriage were already failing, and we had stopped being intimate, leading Susie to make a one-time mistake that supposedly led to our divorce. I was livid upon hearing this distortion of reality and clarified to Joshua that Susie had in fact cheated on me twice, making it clear to him that our divorce was not solely due to a one-time mistake but that she had repeatedly broken my trust with her male friend. To my relief, Joshua believed me and appreciated my honesty in shedding light on my sister's deceitful behavior. He informed me that he had no intentions to stay with a cheating partner either and would be having a talk with Nina regarding this. In the days that followed, my parents repeatedly called me to accuse me of ruining Nina's life as she was now facing a divorce. They blamed me for interfering unnecessarily in her marriage and expressed their frustration about not being able to have a grandchild from her after this. I didn't hold back in the argument either. I countered their accusations, stating that it wasn't my fault their daughter was not faithful in her marriage. I emphasized that instead of fixating on the idea of a grandchild, they should focus on teaching my sister better values and morals, so she could become a better person. Nina also sent me a vile text, accusing me of being a spiteful little boy who couldn't keep my nose out of others' business. She even went on to insinuate that Susie's infidelity during my marriage was somehow justified and that I deserved everything that had happened to me. Her message left me seething with anger. It took me hours to calm myself down after reading her words. However, fate seemed to have its own way of balancing things because I recently learned that Nina is apparently pregnant. She claims Joshua is the father, but he's refusing to take any responsibility. Joshua has reached out to me, requesting me to testify for him when their matter inevitably goes to court since I was the one who had taken those incriminating pictures of Nina with the other man. I have agreed without any hesitation, not just so I can seek revenge on my sister but also out of empathy for Joshua. I don't want another man to endure the pain and betrayal that I experienced with my ex-wife. Since then, my parents and Nina have been relentlessly pressuring me not to testify for Joshua. They keep emphasizing that family comes before anyone. I can't help but find their messages ironic, considering Nina didn't prioritize family when it came to me. Ida for teaching my sister a lesson and making sure her husband doesn't suffer the same fate as me? Update 1. I am surprised to see how polarized everyone's reaction is to my post. I can't believe that there are a few women under my post trying to convince me to support my sister even though she has clearly cheated. I would just like to say to them shame on you. Believe me, I would have had absolutely no issues if my ex-wife had asked for child support after proving to me that the child was mine, however, she didn't. She clearly knew that the child wasn't mine since we were not even intimate at that time hence, she knowingly forced me to be liable for it as she couldn't afford it on her own. I couldn't prove that she had intimate relations with that other guy because there was no proof other than that one text I had found. Hence, I do hate my sister, Nina for screwing me over and testifying for my ex-wife. However, now that Nina is similarly manipulating her husband, I won't stand by it. I am going to testify against her and make sure that Joshua doesn't suffer the same fate. In the future, if it does come out that the child belongs to Joshua after he or she is born, I am sure he will have no problem stepping up because he seems like a nice guy. But until that is proven, why should a husband be forced to pay child support when the wife has been clearly sleeping around with other guys? Nina has shown absolutely no remorse about her affair or for being the cause of her marriage falling apart. Unlike my marriage, Joshua and Nina don't even have a prenup, which means there's a possibility he might have to pay her alimony. Hence, I believe on top of this, he shouldn't be forced to pay child support for a child who isn't his. I believe I am doing the right thing and I am glad that overall a majority of the comments under my post agree with my decision. Update 2 it's been a while since I updated anything here. Today, I provided testimony against my sister in court. I recounted everything I had witnessed her doing with the older man, presenting all the evidence and photos. I could feel my sister's angry gaze fixed on me the whole time, but I remained resolute. Despite her lawyer's attempts to dismiss my testimony by claiming I held a grudge against my sister, the judge upheld its validity. I hope that my testimony will have a positive impact on Joshua's case and that he won't be compelled to pay child support. However, the outcome remains to be seen. In the midst of everything that's been happening, my relationship with my parents has taken a hit. My mom called me, 
Her voice choked with tears after she found out that I had followed through with my promise to testify against my sister. She was clearly disappointed and told me how she and dad were hoping that I wouldn't do such a thing to my sister. As I listened to her, I couldn't help but feel a surge of frustration. I reminded her of how they had never fought for me with such intensity when my sister had done the same thing to me during my divorce and they had even forgiven her for everything. Yet, here she was calling me a disappointment and crying as if my struggles and burdens were nothing compared to my sister's. I went on to tell my mom that it was unfair for them to scold me for standing up for what's right and telling the truth, especially when they hadn't stood by me in the past. It felt like a betrayal, and I made it clear that I didn't need them or my dad in my life if they were going to prioritize my cheating sister over me in such a manner. Since then, I have stopped talking to my parents and refused to pick up their calls or reply to their messages. Update 3, I'm back with an update on my sister's situation. I'm pleased to report that Joshua was cleared of paying any child support to my sister. I'm sure Nina is very upset. I can't help but feel a sense of satisfaction knowing that at least one person was able to avoid the unjust burden that so many others, including myself, have had to endure. I would like to clarify a few more things for the last time that people keep asking under my post, no, I don't have a relationship with Susie's son even though I continue to pay for child support. If the son ever grows up and reaches out to me, I will not hesitate to tell him the truth about his mother. Yes, my parents and I are still not talking to each other, and honestly, I have been feeling much lighter and relaxed without them calling me every other day and accusing me of not supporting my sister. Nina won't dare to confront me because I'm sure she is still embarrassed after I testified against her. Also yes, she will be getting alimony from Joshua which we already knew would happen. No, my parents don't have a relationship with Susie's son since they know he isn't my child. I have no idea if they are going to accept Nina's child either but maybe they will. That's all.